so you're gonna play Monk, huh? The one punch man of the group. More like the many punch man. You use key and stuff to move fast, grab arrows out of midair, and stun lock enemies to make your DM rage quit and wanna die. Spin kick, dodge stuff, walk on water. Wait a second. Jesus? You raised me up, so I Here's how to play Monk. B -b Before we get into that, we have a sponsor. It's World Anvil. And you know what World Anvil is, the awesome world building tool that can help organize maps, locations, and your whole campaign, plus heroes to have everyone in on the fun. But guess what? There's a new feature to make this thing even better. It's the Explorer feature. You are able to browse everything in your world from the same page. You can view all of your maps and timelines and search for articles, secrets, categories, maps, timelines, and notes. Imagine having all of that open while you're playing as a dungeon master. It's your entire homebrew world at your fingertips. You can name anything and be able to search it at the touch of this Explorer feature. So go check that out. It's really awesome and it really makes using World Anvil that much easier. Anyways, here's how to play Monk. Monks are the easiest class in the game. Monks are the second easiest class in the game next to the fighter. At level one, there's literally only one thing you need to manage. Martial arts and our number of defense, which are pre-calculated! Basically, you know kung fu and slam dunk your opponents by having a d4 for fist damage. And also, you can add your wisdom to your AC because you are enlightened. Yeah! <laughs> I know where this knife will hit me. I have foreseen it with my wisdom. It is in my arm. Oof. Equipment? Nope. Don't even need it. Don't need swords, just your fleshy nubs. <laughs> Level 2, key and unarmored movement. Okay, we're uh, starting to get a little complicated here, I know. It's gonna get real difficult. This class gets crazy complicated, so just watch out. No, literally, a dude wrote an entire essay on why the monk isn't easier than the fighter on Reddit, so I get it, man. The monk is super hard, and there's so much to manage. I'll explain it the best I can. Here it goes. You get points. They're called key. You spend the points to do stuff. Spend one, do an extra punch. Spend one, dodge. Spend one, disengage or dash. That's it. Now I'm going to quickly explain this again since I didn't properly do it in my last video. I think if you ended a fighter and a monk to players who have never played D&D before, I think the person playing the monk is going to have an easier time than the fighter. The vague concepts and ephemeral ideas I conveyed in the monk is the easiest class video was to illustrate that I think that there's more rules you have to understand to play a fighter in comparison to a monk. Also, on top of that, monks barely have to manage equipment like armor and weapons since both are handled at level 1. I think on paper the fighter seems easier because it has a simpler idea and less abilities, but I know in practice that this is the opposite. I used to DM for an after school program for kids at a charter school I worked at, and every kid that played a monk had an easier time understanding the game. So there, I'm done arguing this. I'm done hearing about it from you guys as well. Please, for the love of God, don't light up the comments with more of this argument. I'm not going to read it. Anyways, unarmored movement. Oh yeah, this one's real hard to explain, okay? Okay, you move fast, you don't wear armor, it's in the name of grandma to please crack! Level 3, Deflect Missiles in Monastic Tradition. Deflect Missiles lets you catch ranged weapon attacks out of mid-air, and you can throw them back! This is probably my favorite ability in the entirety of D&D 5e. Monastic Tradition. Oh no. Oh no! Don't be intimidated by the monk, Jacob. Just try to imagine it in its underwear. Oh no, it's complicated! Yeah, the monk out here with these monastic traditions that are super dope and add a lot of options to making a monk character. In the PHB, we got Way of the Open Hand. What the fuck is the Way of the Closed Hand? Fisticuffs? Do me, O oh Master of Key! Way of the Open Hand is a pretty basic but still awesome subclass for Monk. You can blast people prone, backwards, or take away reactions. You can also heal and meditate to gain the benefits of the Sanctuary spell? That's awesome! Way of the Four Elements. You can go full last airbender and pick spell-like abilities that give you unique options in combat. I would go through all of them, but there's a lot. I love all the flavor with these abilities. Fangs of the Fire Snake is rad. And Fist of Unbroken Air, <laughs> where, where you create a blast of compressed air that strikes like a mighty fist. 
All right, so it's your turn. What are you doing? Shadow. You're basically a stealth monk. You can create darkness and teleport anywhere in dim light or darkness. This is an awesome pair with Shadow Sorcerer or even like a Warlock that could see in magical darkness because you could cast darkness on yourself or in other areas and then teleport between the spots that you've chosen. It's pretty dope. Xanathar's Guide, Way of the Drunken Master. Oh yeah, we're going full Jackie Chan. You take on the fighting style of a drunk guy and then channel key because why not? I love it when the game gets wild with its rules and it's just like Way of the Shadow, Shadow Dancers. They serve as spies and assassins. Hey, remember that Jackie Chan movie? Yeah, let's make that a fucking class. As a drunken master, you can disengage as a part of your flurry of blows and stand up real easy and redirect attacks to hit other people. You just stumble around the battlefield, it's great. Way of the Kensai, simply put a monk that uses weapons. You delve a little more into fighter with this subclass and get some techniques to master combat. You can deal extra damage and gain bonuses to armor class. Way of the Sun Soul, Shoot ping pong balls made of the sun and burn people with holy light! Level 4, abilities can blah 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 blah, and slow fall. You're a parkour master and can reduce the damage from falling. You float gracefully down to a gentle step. Unless it's like 300 feet and then you're just a pancake. Level 5, st- Okay. So this ability gets a lot of flack. Let's defend it for two seconds before I tear it to shreds. Basically, you disrupt the key in an enemy. You, like, disalign their chakras. <laughs> and stun them as a part of your attack. If they fail a constitution saving throw, they're stunned. It costs a key and nothing else. The stun lasts until the end of the monk's next turn. This is a pretty cool ability because it gives a whole flavor of support to the monk where they can help out in the fight rather than just punching. It can feel pretty awesome when you land it since you enable the bad guys from doing pretty much anything. Okay, that's it. <laughs> this ability is broken as fuck! All right, so pretend you're a poopy little monk of fighting some baddies when you decide, hey, I'm gonna use stunning strike. Whoa, 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 whoa. there's no limit on this other than key. <laughs> Basically, you can just get all these stuns off of all of your attacks if you want to. So at level 5, you can do a flurry of blows and put a stunning strike on every attack! Meaning that the enemy would need to succeed four god saves to not be stunned for a whole round! Oh, I'm fully aware you could overload the monk with a lot of enemies, but since you can break up your attack and movement, you could do the same thing if you drive by punch everyone, which can result in a mass four monster stun, which is insane! Not to mention higher level monks could keep doing this every round. They could even shorten it to just two stun attempts around since most combats in D&D really only last five to six rounds anyways. They're just gonna be bip bip bewed, give and take, dishing out not turns unless the enemy has like a plus 11 constitution saving throw. And you have to sit back there and go, oh, well, I hope they succeed. And stun sucks. It doesn't give the monsters disadvantage. It doesn't just make their speed zero. No, it takes away all their actions. They lose a turn, which they can dish out a bajillion times. Granted, I know it doesn't stack. Don't light me up in the comments. I'm not saying that it does that. So anyways, I'm done ranting about this ability. As a DM, I have been plagued by it for years and I hate it. My only fix for it, if your players are cool with changing it, unlike mine, is to limit it to one stun attempt around. That doesn't completely nerf it, doesn't make it a bonus action or cost more key, and I feel like it balances the overall playstyle of 5e, which is typically a one attempt around kind of system. <clears throat> Anyways. Level 6, Key Empowered Strike. Your fists are magical. You can stun like a beholder for a whole round, you don't think they're fucking magical already? Level 7, Evasion and Stillness of Mind. Man, I really like how many abilities the monk gets. Definitely one of my favorite parts about the class. Evasion is the hip hop zip zop, I can dodge a fireball with a hoo ha wee. Stillness of mind. You can meditate in the middle of battle and get rid of being frightened or charmed. Level 10, purity of body. You're immune to poison and disease. Just straight up level 10 monks can't take poison damage or be diseased. All right, that's cool. <sighs> level 13, tongue of the sun and moon. You can speak 
all languages. Also, other creatures can understand you if you talk to them. Level 14, Diamond Soul. You become proficient in all saving throws. Level 15, Timeless Body. You don't age. I will die soon. Perhaps the level 20 ability it will be enough to save me. The 20th level, you all for initiative and have no key points remaining. You regain four key. 